to him who sits on the throne. Oh, I put that vision in me right now to him who sits on the throne, encircled by the elders. Magnificent colors come bring forth, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, thank to those that have the martyrs that have already gone there, they're sitting there, that have gone before us, they've paid the price. They sit with all the elders encircling the throne. And they say to him who sits on the throne, and unto the Lamb of God, be glory and honor and power forever. Be glory and honor and power forever. Be glory and honor and power forever to you alone, you alone, you alone. You alone be glory and honor and power forever. The Lord says that we sit in heavenly places. Don't you know that in spirit you're already there? Be glory and honor and power forever, Lord. Be glory and honor and power, Lord. We join in with all the elders up there, Father. We join in with all the elders. Hallelujah. Lift your voices to the King. Hallelujah. You got to learn to send your spirit up to the heavens. Hallelujah. Come on, elders. You got to learn to ascend yourself up to the heavens. Hallelujah. Put on your eagle's wings. Put all your eagle's wings. Ascend up a little higher. Draw near to the presence of God. Walk boldly into the throne room of grace and there you will find help in a time of need. In Jesus' name, offer up a sacrifice of praise in the name of Jesus. Ascend up a little higher to the Lord. Open up your hearts. Hallelujah. Oh, he just wants to be loved on this morning. Oh, let the strings play. Let the dancers dance. Hallelujah. Let the strings play, let the dancers dance, hallelujah, the king will return. The king sits on the throne, hallelujah. (laughs) Oh, my king, my lord. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, let the music play. Let the dancers dance. Hallelujah. The king is returning. Hallelujah. Yes, let the strings play. Let the strings play. Hallelujah. Let the strings play before the Lord. Hallelujah. Let the strings play before the Lord. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Let the dancers dance. Let the dancers dance. Hallelujah. The King is returning. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He can fill you up too. Just raise your hands. There's going to be a house of worship today. Hallelujah. We will play skillfully before you today. Let all the singers sing, the dancers dance. Hallelujah. Your house will be a house of prayer. Your house will be a house of prayer. Hallelujah. Not a den of thieves. Not a den of thieves, Lord. Not a den of thieves, Lord. Not a den of thieves here, Lord. Not a den of thieves here, Lord. No den of thieves here. There's no house of thieves, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. We're not just trying to jump over the fence. We walk right through the gate, Lord. For we are the sheep, Lord. We are the sheep, Lord. We offer up a sacrifice. Yes, put yourselves on the altar right now. Put yourselves on the altar right now. Learn to pray by the Spirit. Hallelujah. Learn to pray by the Spirit. The King is coming. Let the musicians play. Let the dancers dance. Let the singers sing. Let the people rejoice. Let them lift their hands. Let us lift holy hands to the Lord. Let us lift holy hands to the Lord in the name of Jesus. Oh, 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 oh,
to the Lord. Just open up your hearts to the Lord. Open up your hearts to the Lord. He's all that matters right now. He's all that matters right now. He gave you life. He's given you everything. We owe everything to the Father. Just give him your attention right now in Jesus' name. Give him full attention. Set your affections onto the Lord right now. Set him on. Just gaze upon the Lord. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb. Foster yourself. Behold the Lamb. Look on His face. Use your imagination. Look on His face. The Lord gave you that. Use your imagination. Look on His face. Look at His eyes. It says His eyes are a fire. Use your imagination. Gaze on Jesus. It says be childlike. Use your imagination. Look on the face of Jesus. Look on the eyes of Jesus. Don't you know that you can walk on water when you do that? Don't you know that you can walk on water when you look upon his face? <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. Don't you know that you can do the impossible when you look upon his face? Don't you know when you look upon his face, what matters here on earth is not it is not your laws anymore. The law of gravity didn't pertain to Peter in that moment when he looked on upon his face. Some of you say, what do you mean, Pastor, we can walk on water? I'm saying, no, you can do the impossible is what I'm saying. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Open your hearts more. Understand, can you not perceive what's going on here? Too much fighting, too much debating about the word. This is simple. Simple, 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 simple. Too much debating, too much fighting. Too many people with degrees talking about things they don't even know what they're talking about. Simple, be childlike. Step into the Spirit of God. Be childlike, that's all. Whatever wisdom we think we have, the Lord trumps it all in the name of Jesus. We trust you, Lord. Submit yourselves to the Lord. Submit yourselves to the Lord. Submit yourselves before the Lord. If you know how to praise, you know how to worship in tongues, go ahead and do that now. Go ahead and do that now. Just worship in tongues. Just worship in tongues. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There you go. If you know how to do that now, just worship in tongues. Worship in tongues. There are things you don't even know what to pray about. Only the Lord's going to show you through your tongues. There's things you don't even have a clue what you're supposed to pray about. Pray in tongues right now. Pray in tongues. 
There are things we don't have a clue what the Lord is trying to do. Just pray in tongues, pray in tongues. Pray in tongues, pray in tongues. Pray in tongues, hallelujah. There you go, do it, do it, do it, do it. There you go, draw in, draw in, step right in. Step right in, hallelujah. Hallelujah, there's a buffet being spread out right now. There's a party that's about to happen, hallelujah. And the Lord say, invite all who want to come in. Invite them all, invite all the ones who want to come in, yeah. Invite all the ones who want to come in, yes. If the inner cities, your friends don't want to listen to you, invite your family. If your family don't want to listen to you, go on out to your neighborhoods. <laughs> if the neighborhood don't want to listen, go on out into the cities. Hallelujah. If the surrounding cities don't want to listen to you, go on out into the surrounding counties in the name of Jesus. If the surrounding counties don't want to listen to you, go on into the surrounding states in the name of Jesus. If the states don't want to listen to you, <laughs> then you go international hallelujah go out into the highways and the byways wherever they lead hallelujah <laughs> oh father until we cover the earth cover the earth until we cover the earth <laughs> oh until we cover the earth lord until we cover the earth with your glory. Until we cover the earth with your presence. Until we cover the earth, hallelujah. Yeah, pray in tongues. If you agree with that right there, just pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit, pray in the spirit. You prayer warriors start to begin to touch the benches. I want you to touch the walls. The Lord says that any two of you as touching anything here on earth, eh, as touching anything here on earth, just go touching things, amen? Touch the benches, touch the walls. As touching anything on earth in the name of Jesus. Touch people, lay hands on them in the name of Jesus. Lay hands on them. Yeah, Lord, hallelujah. As touching anything here on earth. Yeah, as touching anything here on earth. Yes, as touching anything here on earth. Hallelujah. Yeah. The Lord says again, verily, 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 again, truly, I tell you that if two of you, I love the way he says that again, verily, man, I'm about to tell you something true. Anytime he says verily, uh, verily, verily, he's about to tell you something a little bit radical. Again, truly, he says, I speak truth. I'm telling you that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Look what it says in the Amplified. Y'all ready to be blown away? It says, again, I tell you, if two of you on earth agree and you harmonize together. <laughs> Look what it says. Look what the Holy Spirit does when you let him. It says, again, I tell you, if two of you on earth agree, if you harmonize together, make a symphony together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah.
the name of Jesus. Every demonic activity come up and out in the name of Jesus. Every lying devil come up and out in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. You monitoring spirits come up and out in the name of Jesus. Yeah, hallelujah. You spirits of infirmity come up and out in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. You spirits of exhibitionism come up and out in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You interfering spirits come up and out in the name of Jesus. You interfering spirits, you interfering spirits, you interfering spirits, you will not interfere here anymore. You got to get out in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Yes. You spirits of pride, you got to go. Oh, yes. You spirits of pride, you got to go. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Spirits of insanity, spirits of oh. fantasy in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You must go. You must go yeah, in Jesus' name. In the name Jesus. You've been denied oh, access. I'm a father, I'm a father, I'm a father, I'm a father. Hallelujah. Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says again, I tell you, if two of you on earth agree, if you (laughs) harmonize together, make a symphony together about whatever, it can be about whatever, about anything and about everything. (laughs) Man, this scripture, this scripture is going forth. What you have heard today is now being completed today as you hear it in Jesus' name. As you hear this today, this scripture is going forth. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Man, I got to read it again. Again, I tell you, if two of you on earth agree, if you harmonize together, make a symphony together about whatever, anything, and everything, they may ask. It says they may ask. In other words, the two of you. There's more than two of you. You may ask. The Father is giving you permission. You may ask whatever you. It says, and it will come to pass and be done for them by my Father in heaven. Be childlike. Believe that. Amen. Be childlike. Well, Pastor Tim, I don't know if you know, you, uh, you know, you, people can ask about anything. I mean, what are they? You can just ask about anything. Get that simple thought out of you. In the presence of God, what can you ask for? There's only good. You can't ask for evil in the presence of God. We've already shunned evil. Harmonize together. Make music together. Hallelujah. That's what we do every morning. Amen. Let's step back into it. Step right back in. Step right back into it. On the kisse on the kasha on the baba kisse le nea. Oh my in the kisse on the nana in the. Rebaba in the oba in the kisse on the nana in the day. Some of you say, "What is he saying?" I don't know. I'm praying in tongues. Leave me alone, rubber ball, course in the end. The camera, my mind in the end. You're the lie in the camera, my mind. He said, Iba corbel in the kiss. Eba kia kasata in the kielana. Ababa kalana in the kiela kish. Iba kiela na isi be ke. Iba na ida baba ya kasala na ida. Ibe be ela na bi kiasi ya tere ida. Abba <laughs> Abba, 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 Abba. 
Aba, 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 aba. Aba, aba, aba. Oh, aba, aba. Oh, aba, 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 aba. Ena kasayem beriri beriri be. Ora baba kosayem beriri beriri be. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're making a melody. We're orchestrating common agreement. Hallelujah. I want y'all to repeat after me in the spirit of agreement under this anointing so the Father can hear what we are declaring and decreeing in the name of Jesus. What is it that we are agreeing upon for our lives this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to say with me, I am complete in him. I am complete. Who is the head over all rule and authority? Who is the head of all rule and authority? I am alive with Christ. I am alive with Christ. I am free from the law of sin and death. I am, free from sin and death. I am far from oppression. And will not live in fear. Will not live in fear. I am born of God. And the evil one does not touch me. I am holy and without blame. I am holy without blame. Before him who loves me. Before him who loves me. I am the mind. I have the mind of Christ. I have the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. The Spirit of God who is greater than the enemy lives in me. Hallelujah. I have received abundant grace. I have received abundant grace. And the gift of righteousness. And, the gift of righteousness. and I reign in life through Jesus. I have received the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Jesus. The eyes of my heart are enlightened. I am renewed in the knowledge of Christ and no longer want to live in my old ways. Hallelujah, I am merciful. I do not judge others and I forgive quickly. And I do this by God's grace. In all circumstances, I live by faith in God. And I extinguish all the flaming darts of the enemy. I can do whatever I need to do in life. Through Christ Jesus who gives me strength. Who all believes what you just spoke out loud? Give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. Hey. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you. That's all I can say right now is thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's give him thanks, church. Let's just give him thanks for everything he's going to continue to do for us. And this is time to give him glory. It's time to give him glory. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah, hallelujah. 
you, Lord. It's your word. It's your love. Oh, how glorious are you, Lord. It's your power. It was your cross that saved me. That saved me.
more time. And break every chain, oh God You have done great things We dance in your freedom Awaken alive Oh Jesus, our Savior Your name lifted high, oh God You have done great worship going guys the Lord is not done the Lord is not done <laughs> how many of us have been overwhelmed this week raise your hand how many of us have been overwhelmed this week I can imagine I'm right there with you guys we're on the same boat but this is the time this is the time to let go this is the time to be set free from anything that you're holding on to or any oppression that Satan has over you. This is a time to let go. your hands galaxy spin in a heavenly dance oh god all that you are so overwhelming first two i hear the sound of your voice and all at once is the gentle rain thundering noise all that you are so overwhelming. How do you lie? Again, verse one. I see the work of your hands. Galaxy spin in the heavenly dance. Oh God, all that you are. So overwhelming. Verse two. I hear the sound of your voice. And all You are so overwhelming. I delight. I delight myself in you, captivated by your beauty. I'm overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed by you. And I run into your.
praise God. We give you praise. Turn these things around And God turn it around God turn it around And God turn it around I'm calling on the name The change is everything Turn it around, God. Turn it around, God. Turn it. Around. Turn these things around And God turn it around God turn it around God turn it around I'm calling on the name The change is everything Turn it around, God, turn it around.
have a mountain. What is that mountain? Speak to that mountain. Is it a mountain of pride? Is it a mountain of slumber? Is it a mountain of fear? Is it a mountain of pornography? Whatever the mountain is, you speak to that mountain. You have the authority to speak to that mountain. So we just declare to that mountain, we declare fear go. Pornography go. Slumber go. Pride go. Control go. In Jesus name. Get it speak to your mountain use your voice of authority that he gave you speak to the mountain that it remove itself in Jesus name Turn it around. 
God, turn it around. And God, turn it around. God, turn it around. Use your voices now, church. You proclaim to God, turn it around. God, turn it around. Come on, church. I know you guys can sing louder than that. How big is your obstacle? God, turn it around. 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 Everybody needs a voice. I'm going to tell you right now, I got a text this morning, and it's a tell the church, just tell the church. It's good for to ask for prayer, and it's good to be prayed for, and it's good for people to lay their hands on, but tell the church that they need to say it themselves. And that was before we began to, to declare this morning all the who I am's in Christ scriptures. So God was already orchestrating a theme for his Sunday service, amen? And that theme is open up your mouth. Let your belly and your heart be filled with the words and the promises of God and then believe them so much that they'll come flowing out of your mouth. You know, when I was in the world and I was lost, a lost case, a lost cause, no hope, drug addict, dope dealer, a lesbian out on the streets, I remember I used to go home and I would see my mother so she could wash my clothes and I could do some things at the house and rest and she would let me in. And every time she would see me, she would say, Nina, are you on that stuff again? Are you high? I'm like, Mom, don't ask me that question because the answer is yes. And if you don't want to know the answer, then just don't ask that question because if God can see all things, who am I to hold this from you? And she would look at me in my eyes and she would brush my shoulders off as if I had dirt on me. And she would say, it's okay, daughter, because one of these days you will serve the Lord wholeheartedly. And I looked her dead in the eye, didn't blink one time, and I said, I believe you, mother, but that just is not today. <laughs> And one day, one day when we were in a circle smoking dope, passing around that glass pipe, we began to talk about what would the future look like five years from now. And they said, what do you think you'll be doing five years from now? Oh, I'm going to have the north, the south, the east, the west. I'll be the biggest dope dealer, one said. The other said, oh, I'm definitely going to get that Mustang I've been saving for. And we're all just talking, right? And it gets to me. And as I hit that pipe and pass it along, I said, well, I believe I'll be serving the Lord wholeheartedly. <laughs> that thing came bubbling out of my mouth. I was embarrassed. 
I thought, who in the world just said that? And I pray that their ears were closed because I, they, where did that come from? God, it was spoken to me my whole entire life in the world. Every single time I saw that woman, that's what she said to me. And you know what? Without even knowing, I said, I believe you, agreeing with her, just not today. And as a result, it came bubbling out of my mouth. And shortly after that, I gave my whole entire life to Christ. I share that testimony this morning. Hallelujah. Y'all can give the Father some praise. Come on. How many of y'all do hooping and hollering when the, when the Cowboys do a touchdown? My God. How many of y'all like the Rangers? Woo! But when it comes to God and doing his miracles and performing his word, our mouth got to stay closed. Get out of that religious mode, y'all. Praise him. He deserves all the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I share this testimony today because there is an anointing here today when you agree with the word of God and you begin to let it bubble out of your mouth. I am healed in the name of Jesus. I am no longer broke in Jesus' name. I have the mind of Christ. I have a future set for me. My children are saved. All the backsliders are coming back in the name of Jesus. If you believe it, you'll say it with your mouth. You'll be so convinced. I remember when my brother-in-law came to see me one time preached and he said my goodness that woman she preaches as if it, that is just the, the fact that there ain't nothing else I said absolutely <laughs> he's like it don't matter if she was wrong though she's just gonna preach it that way I'm telling you right now the Word of God is not wrong it is truth it is real and it can be a promise that is fulfilled in your life if you would choose to thank him for it praise him for it and then begin to change your vocabulary to match the words of this it's who you become it changes your voice. It changes your speech. It changes the way you walk. I used to walk like a gangster. Now I walk in the light. If he did it for me, he can do it for you. Hallelujah. Woo, this worship team done got me stirred up. Hallelujah. Who's ready to bless the Lord this morning? Yes! Tithe and offering! Tithe and offering! A sacrifice of our praise! A sacrifice of our funds! In Jesus' name! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I'm going to read out of Matthew chapter 6. And I'm going to go to verse 16. Hallelujah! And whenever you fast... Do not put on a gloomy face. See, we don't do this for man, do we? Oh my gosh, we become undone and become, if I was a fool for the world, by golly, I can be a fool for God in Jesus' name. We don't do this for man's appraisal and we don't do this for the claps and adoration of man or woman. We do it for a glorious God who deserves it. He says, do not put on a gloomy face as the hypocrites do, for they neglect their appearance in order to be seen fasting by men. I say to you, they have their reward in full. My God, there's a reward that you can't contain when you do it for him. There is a reward that you won't be able to hold or store up or have room enough to receive if you do it for him. Hallelujah. Verse 17, but you, when you fast, anoint your head in the name of Jesus and wash your face so that you may not be seen fasting by men, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will repay you. We're talking about the tithe and the offering. Not every man, not every woman sees your accounts. 
Not every man, not every woman sees what you give, but guess who sees it all? God Almighty. And I'm going to tell you what, if you, it's old school to have a, 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 a book check, right? A checkbook. Back in the day when I was 16, I used to have a record of everything I spent. And it would say, uh, Coors Light, Coors Light. <laughs> in parentheses, a back dope. <laughs> you know, where my heart was, there was my treasure. Where my treasure was, there was my heart. If you look at your funds, it'll tell you a lot about your heart. This is according to the word of God, amen? So he says here, do not lay up for yourselves treasures upon earth. We all want to leave something for our children, right? We, want, we all want to walk in the blessing, and that is evident in this life, is it not? He says he gives us a land, and every place we step our foot, that land will belong to us if we believe it and receive it. Amen? Amen. So that, to me, sounds like some evidence. It don't look like we're supposed to be broke, walking around all in need, does it? Do not lay up for yourselves treasure upon earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasure in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in or steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. My gosh. Verse 22 goes on to say, the lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is clear, your whole body will be full of light. If you can perceive the words that God is trying to speak to you in his word, that means it's going to be perceived through the, the hearing of your ears and the seeing of your eye. How many of y'all been enjoying the, 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 uh, the session on hearing and seeing in the name of Jesus with Pastor Tim? Do I got anybody with some ears and eyes in the house of God today? Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he says here, the lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is clear, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? What is he saying? He's saying if you don't understand these precepts, you'll never be able to fully walk in them. You have to allow God to open up your understanding in the area of finances, in the area of tithe, in the area of offering, in every aspect of your life. And if you're unable to see it, and you're unable to hear it, as a result, other areas of your life will be strained. You understand? He says in verse 24, no one can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or he will hold to one and despise the other you cannot serve God and mammon how many y'all know what mammon is it's not a scary creature on Nickelodeon let me tell you it's money it's funds it's riches of the earth I'm going to Luke 16 in the Amplified Classic he says, and I tell you, verse 9, and I tell you, make friends for yourself by means of unrighteous mammon, deceitful riches, money, possession, so that when it fails, they, those you have favored, may receive and welcome you into the everlasting habitations and dwellings. What does this mean? My goodness, y'all. If you choose to invest in God's work, how many people walk up in this church and are blessed as a result? How many people's lives have been changed and touched through the ministry that God establishes through his church? You guys want to invest in something good? Invest in some straight up obedience. <laughs> and put your funds where your mouth is and obey the word of God in this area. I'm almost finished. It says, He who is faithful in a very little thing, God considers money a very little thing. His streets are made of gold. He doesn't need your money. He, he wants your obedience. Amen. 
he who is faithful in a very little thing is faithful also in much. And he who is dishonest and unjust in very little thing is dishonest and unjust also in much. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the case of unrighteous mammon, deceitful riches, money, possessions, who will entrust to you the true riches? Are we doing it for God? Because he's got the true riches. And when he's asking that question, he's asking it in a derogatory way. Who? Who's going to do this? Man? Are you doing it for man? Are you doing it for the applaud of man? Or are you doing it for him? Because if you're doing it for him, he's asking you specifics in this area. Are you living it in this life with the means and the possessions and the energy he's given you for your funds for yourself? Maybe it's not a man. Maybe it's not a woman. Maybe it's just yourself. Amen? He says, and if you have not proved faithful in that which belongs to another, whether God or man, who will give you that which is your own? That is the true riches. No servant is able to serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will stand by and be devoted to the one and despise the other. You can't be in the middle. You can't be like, but no, no, no. I serve him, but it's just in this area that I'm just lacking. You have to be devoted in all ways in your heart. And let me tell you something. The Holy Ghost will give you that help when it comes time to obey. You may be thinking in your heart right now, but how? By the power of the Holy Ghost. You devote yourself to do it. You devote yourself to obey because you love him so much i don't know how god you're asking this for me and i feel like you're pulling my entire soul asking this of me but because i love you i will give you my life abraham was willing to give up his own baby boy how many of us will be willing to throw our kid up on that altar i, I pretty much can say none <laughs> nope but guess what God called Abraham? A friend of God. A friend of God. Abraham did not give himself that name. God says that is my friend because he's willing to lay down his life for me. And God is such a much better friend. And what did he do in return for Abraham? Abraham, Abraham, I got you, man. I got you. Let your little baby boy live. I'll provide the sacrifice. It says, and I'm just going to read this just in case there's, there's any in the house today, which I don't think there is. Amen. But it says, now the Pharisees who were covetous and lovers of money heard all these things taken together and they begin to sneer and ridicule and scoff at him. How many times when a preacher goes up and minister the tithe and the offering, do they get these looks? Or in somebody's heart, they may be saying, my God again can't we just skip over this and why does it got to be so long they call those in the bible pharisees amen there's no pharisees here is there hallelujah if you're a lover of god and you're a cheerful give i want you to stand up at attention and give a shout to the lord Hallelujah. come on come on <laughs> come on Usher. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! We love you, Lord! We love you, Lord! We kill a spirit that has parasitical qualities in the name of Jesus. You deserve it all! You deserve it all! In the name of Jesus! Bride, and we love you, Lord. Thank 
thank you for the cheerful givers in this house. Thank you for the tithers, Lord. Multiply it, Lord. I hear the windows of heaven opening up right now. Hallelujah. It's about to rain on your parade and make it a lot more better. In Jesus' name, for all of y'all that agree with me, shout amen. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Mama Nina, that fire, I think that fired everybody up right there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ha, you know, Lou. Ooh, you know, mm, 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 mm. Let me get everybody to rise for me. Can I get everybody to stand? This is going to be a moment of worship, true worship with this next song. And don't forget to pass the tithe, guys. You can come, you guys can come forward. She announced it, but it's all right. It's all right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's just take this time. For the ones who are giving, go ahead and give. But for the rest of us, let's just raise our hands right now. Let's just embrace our Father. Let us feel his love. We thank you, Lord. We thank you that you keep getting us through situations. That you keep having us move forward and overcoming obstacles. We love you, Lord. We love you. We fall down. We lay our crowns at the feet of Jesus. The greatness of and love at the feet of Jesus. Sing that again. And we fall down, we lay our crowns at the feet of Jesus. The greatness of mercy and love at the feet of Jesus. And we cry, holy, holy, holy. We cry, holy, holy,
celebramos Señor Oh aleluya Te celebramos Señor Bien Bien Yes You may be seated Hallelujah Hallelujah, praise God, hallelujah. Give me a bunch of them things, golly. Oh, hold that right there, hold it right there. Hallelujah. Children, you can go to classes. Hallelujah, it's good that our children see us, amen, like that? Yeah, they'll learn one day. They'll learn one day, they'll get it one day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can anybody say hallelujah? Hallelujah. Well, I tell you, I love that word, man, golly. Something about that word, amen? Something about that word, amen? Oh, Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father. I want to say this scripture. It's a, uh, it's a, uh, oh, let's see, where were we? It is Matthew 18, 19. If you could put that up real quick. Matthew 18, 19 in the Amplified. And I want to, I want y'all to see this. This, this is, we did this today. What, what this scripture is about to be posted up there, it, it's something that we fulfilled today. And man, I wish I could, if you could just get a little revelation on that and understand what it means to fulfill a scripture. Remember, Jesus said something along these lines whenever he said, hey, the spirit of the Lord is upon me and he's anointed me to preach. Remember that? And he said, this day, this scripture is fulfilled. Do you remember that? <laughs> you remember that? And, and that, that means there's a, there, that means there's a way to fulfill scripture. In other words, we just said this, and this has happened. And what you hear today and what you saw today is the fulfillment of this verse and this scripture. Do you understand? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this is what it says, Matthew 18, 19. It's a scripture we all know, but I want to read it in the Amplified. I said the Amplified. Read it in the Amplified. Amen. I want you to see this. We fulfilled this today. And then when we read it, we're all going to say, Amen. Amen. That's what we're all going to do. This is a scripture we all know and we're all familiar with, but we're going to read it in a different context. Look what it says. Again, I tell you, if two of you on earth agree, if you harmonize together and make a symphony together about whatever, about anything and about everything, they may ask. When the church fulfills this, if you, any two of you, which we got more than two together, we done harmonized together, we done did a symphony together, and whatever anything and whatever everything, you may ask. It says they may ask. He's giving you, he's giving you the go-ahead. After you've done your due diligence, we have done harmonized together, we've done, made a symphony together of some music, amen? I mean, did any of you hear that? <laughs> Then the Lord says, you may ask. Amen? You may ask. So right now, just take this time. I want you to, anything you've been asking for. He says, you can do it. Anything you've been asking for. Go ahead and close your eyes. What you've been asking for the Lord. What you've been asking for the Lord. What have you been asking for the Lord? Just ask him right now. You can do it in your tone. You can do it out loud, whatever you want. Father, here we go. All these prayers being presented to you, Father. Whatever it is. Is it healing? Is it deliverance? Is it a family member? Is it somebody you love? Is it a child? Is it a man? Is it a woman? Is it your job? Is it your circumstances? Ask. Ask the Lord right now. We did it all. We did it all the work. Ask. Ask. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, Father. Hear the prayers, Father. Hear the prayers, Lord. Yes, Father. Yes, Father. Yes, Lord. The word says that will come to pass and be done for them is what the word says. Now, I want you to thank the Lord for that. Say thank you, Father. And give a hand for the thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Golly, I'm full of the Lord. I don't know about y'all. Hallelujah. You know, when I play, I, you know, I, I was playing drums up there, and you know, you, you know, you, you, you guys are blessed. You got a pastor. I used to lead worship, amen? I used to lead worship, and so I understand how worship works with prophecy, okay? And I want you to understand that I understand there's just something about when you play skillfully. I already know that an instrument well played can cast out devils. I already know that by the word of God because David played, and it says those devils left Saul. 
Amen? What was he doing? He was playing with an anointing, honoring the Father. And the enemy, those devils, know the sound. The, those devils, they know the sound. They know what true worship sounds like when it comes from your spirit man. They don't like it any more than a religious person likes it. Yeah. Yeah. You ever seen a religious person walk in a spirit-filled moment? Oh, yeah. Hey, they, the devils don't like it any more than that. I want you to, I'm going to tell you something here. The devil and his cohorts are very religious beings. They're very religious. I want you to say that this is, this is a really, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's something that I've really come to understand and know, and I want to share this with you. It's very profound if you can get into this. Satan is very religious. That may sound awkward to some of y'all because I thought religion was good. And remember, we already know by James, it says the only religion you should have is helping the widows and the orphans. That's it. Whatever other religion you're thinking is a religion is not a religion. Help the orphans and the widows. That's your religion. Help the orphans and the, the fatherless and the ones without a husband. You understand? The ones that have no covering, no, no coverage. Help those. Let that be your religion. Everything else that you think is religion, just cast it out the door. Because anything else apart from that, Satan is very, very religious. His uh, evil spirits are very, very religious. They're religious characters. Oh, they are real quick to point the finger at you if you just slightly off of dotting your I or crossing your T. Do you understand? Oh, they're if you're just slightly off. Hey, oh, I thought, I thought you prayed this morning. Remember you prayed. Oh, they're very religious. Very religious, very, very, well, I thought you prayed yesterday that you said that you, anything, it was, uh, you give your life to the Lord, and now you're doing this. Oh, they're very religious. Oh, they're very religious. They don't know the concept of East is from the West. They don't know the concept of forgetting. They don't know the concept of letting go. They don't know what forgiveness means. They don't know what it means to let go. Do you understand? They don't know what forgiveness is. They don't have a clue. They always remember sin. You understand? They always remember it. Where love keeps no record of it. You understand? Anything outside of that keeps a record of everything you've done. That's a religious person. Oh, yeah, that's religious spirit right there. Keep a record dotted eye that back in 19, back in 1975. And then back in 1983, and you understand? Oh, they keep a good record of it. And I always say this, if the, Lord, if, if the enemy wants to re remind me of my past, I'm going to remind him of his future. Yeah. Oh, well, let me remind you in the millennial age what's going to happen to you. I'm going to watch you in the lake of fire. You're going to go down, and we're all going to be standing there with Jesus. And it says, watching that old dragon go down, be the end of you. Everything that I've suffered, everything that, I've, that has hit me, come against me, every hurt, every pain was because of that evil thing, and it's going to go down. You understand? Every family member that was attacked, everything that came against me, everything that tried to kill me, but I ain't dead yet anymore. You understand? All that is going to die one day. Oh, I can't wait till that day. Oh, I can't wait to watch them. I have my binoculars on, man. Did you, you know, man. Oh, man. I get so excited about that. I get excited about the heavenlies. Amen? We should. We should be looking forward to that. Amen? Golly. Amen. God bless you. Welcome to IBC Church. Amen? Welcome to IBC Church. We love you, and we hope this church is growing. We believe you're growing spiritually. I don't care about numbers, but I care about quality. You understand? Yeah, we, you know, we're only so big anyway, you know what I mean? I mean, I'm fine with having quality in here. We want to have quality word, quality understanding, and I want you, without even realizing it, as the months go by, to start saying to yourself, you know, something different about me, you know? I, I feel like I can stand on my own feet now. I don't have to run to somebody. I don't have to run in this and that. I can now realize that the Father is with me because I have done a little bit of striving with the Lord. Because I've done some work with God. The only reason why I can stand the way I stand here is because me and the Lord done some work together. I had to work my faith. I had to strive. 
Strive, you know what I'm saying? And there's two ro- uh, ways of the word strive. When you think of striving, you, sometimes striving means quarreling, but sometimes striving means to have an endeavor, a mission. I strive to be the best that I can. And you all, you quit your striving with each other. You understand? It goes two ways. Amen? And those two words can have two definitions. And I want you to know that the Lord, he wants you to strive with him. He wants you to work with him like on a mission. He wants you to work out those things that are inside you. He wants you to work with him in understanding his person so that the less of you begins to go down and more of him begins to come up in your life. Amen? And we know that whatever Jesus touched and whatever he was into was successful. So the less of me and the more of you, the more success I'm going to have. Amen? The more I'm going to be able to get through, it doesn't mean problems go away, but I'm going to slash them up and get out just like a jungle, and, you know, and they go through with that machete, that machete, and they go down. Well, the Lord is a double-edged sword that swings both ways, amen? And you go right through that forest, and you know what? You make paths not only for you, but for the ones that come behind you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen. amen? Philippians 1, 27. Thank God. God for his word. Man, I would not be nothing if it was just, if I would, you know, some people may say, well, you know, all these guys do is stir themselves up in an emotion or whatever. What we're doing is we know the word of God, and because we have revelation of the word of God, then we lift holy hands. That's what that means, to lift holy hands. When you lift holy hands, that means you have revelation of the word of God, and it has caused you to lift hands and say, whoa, 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 this scripture has now been fulfilled in my life. And I lift hands in a response. Amen. I lift hands not only in a response of worship, but all of a sudden my wallet wants to open up too. Man, I'm telling you, without, before I got a revelation of God and before I knew the, the, uh, the understanding of my relationship with the Holy Spirit, you couldn't get $5 out of me in the church. But all of a sudden, when I found a new relationship with the Holy Ghost, All of a sudden, I was ready to give on every occasion, the way it says in 1 Corinthians. And the Lord says he provides seed to the sower. In other words, he only gives seed to sowing people. Are you a giver? Then you'll have seed because that's a promise. He provides seed to the sower. If you hold on to your money, he don't give you no seed. He don't give seeds to hoarders. He gives seeds to sowers. Amen? Amen? So that's what we're doing. Not only, in, not only in, in, am I responding, the tithe is a response of a revelation. Man, let me, let me will you go, well, can I go on this rev, tra, rabbit trail real quick here? I promise you I won't take long today. We've done a lot of worshiping today, and I just want to get the word of God in you. But you know, there, a revelation is, I mean, the tithe is a revelation of your relationship with God. And let me prove it to you, because it's the first time that the tithe really kind of was spoken out. It was when Abraham saw Melchizedek. Now, Abraham, he was given a promise, and all of a sudden his, his family member, uh, uh, what was his name? Lot. Thank you, Dad. And his family member, Lot, uh, you know those family members, they're in with God, but then all of a sudden they get themselves in some trouble, and you, your godly selves, got to go rescue them. You, know, you, know, you ever been there before? Well, that's where Abraham was, and Lot got himself in trouble. He was over there hanging by Sodom and Gomorrah, hanging too close to everything that was going on in the world, and he found himself entrapped with them. And then all of a sudden, Abraham got a word and said, I'm going to destroy that city. Oh, Lord, Father, but I have some loved ones in there. I have some loved ones, you understand? And so the Lord said, well, I'll tell you what, I'll let you rescue your loved ones. Boom, Abraham went, rescued his family, and, and beat up those five kings. And on the way back, he came back richer. He came back rich because of all that stuff that he, he conquered when he was conquering family members. When he, after he was doing some work, some striving, he came out with some, some blessing. And that one king that survived, he ran over. He said, man, look, Abraham, I see everything's awesome with you. We're great. Look, man, I'll tell you what. You can have the people, you know. I mean, uh, what did he want? He asked for the people. He said, you can have the money if I can have the people. And Abraham said, no, 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 no. You definitely can't have the people. And lest any man say they made Abraham rich. In other words, no, I never, uh, I never. 
See, he was, he was offering them a transaction. He was going to give them, look, I'll give you some money for some people. And just like the devil is, you know. The devil's like that. And he comes back and he says, no, no, I ain't going to take a dime from you. Never. I don't want everyone to say that an enemy made me rich. In other words, only the father does that. And in that, before that whole little conversation happened, right before he had that revelation, a God man named Melchizedek kind of got in the way and met Abraham first. And he said, hey, I'm here to bless you. The God of Jerusalem, I'm a priest, and I bring bread and wine, and I'm going to bless you. That happened right before that little conversation. And in a response to the blessing, they broke bread. Melchizedek broke the bread and, and brought it to him. And he said, God bless Abraham. God bless God, maker of heaven and earth. And God bless Abraham, the inheritor of everything in it. And he blessed Abraham, and they broke bread. And after that happened, Abraham, in a revelation of what just happened, it's like, man, I have the blessings. He responded with a tenth of everything he had. You understand? That's the only time a tither becomes a tither, is a revelation and a response to, my gosh, I have the blessing. I know it's hard, right? You know, the, you know uh, Hebrews says that the tithe is not for the immature. The tithe is only for the mature. People that are active tithers, it's because they've walked into maturity. They've stepped into it. Hebrews says that. He says it's hard to understand the tithe because it comes from a heart and only a heart that is changed and yearns to the Lord can understand those things. Amen? Amen? What does all that do? It's because I've strived with the Lord. It's because me and him did some work. Lord, I need to pay this bill, but I'm going to give this thing, and I'm going to work this, this, you know, and beat this flesh, and here I am, and I'm going I'm to just give it to you because I know it's yours, and I don't want to rob you of it. The tithe, and every, the tithe of everything belongs to the Lord is what Psalm says. And so I had a revelation of that, and I'm just going to give it to you. And it took me several months of just doing my duty. What was I doing? I was striving to know the person. He promised something, and I was striving. I was endeavoring. I was missioning myself to say, man, if, 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 if this is true, then it's got to come out. And if it is, man, I'm going to be blessed. And I strive with that. I strive with it. I worked it. I worked it. My flesh didn't want to. And I said, I'm bringing it. I'm bringing it. And the flesh said, but you ain't going to pay the bill. And then the devil said, yeah, what your flesh said, you ain't going to pay the bill. Because that's how he works with the man, you know, with the will of man. Do you do know that? Sometimes it ain't the devil. It's your own person. Sometimes it ain't the devil. It's your own flesh saying, you know, but you're going to be broke, you know. And then the devil says, yeah, what he said, you're going to be broke. <laughs> now you got two against one and you got to learn. You got to learn to strive. When you got more than one against you. I mean, if anything, you're always going to have two things against you. Your flesh and Satan working with the will of your flesh. It's always going to be two against one. You better learn to fight two against one. I mean, when you do Kung Fu and Taekwondo and you learn all that stuff, I remember little David, one of my little cousins, he had to pass a test to get his other belt, and he had to go two against one. He had to do that. It's the same way. You got to learn to fight two against one. And when you learn to strive and you work that out, it's like Jesus when he was in the 40 days being tempted. What was he doing? He was striving with his own flesh that was hungry and with Satan who was saying, I know you're hungry. Come on, feed it. You understand? He was striving with himself saying, God, do I have to go to the cross? And Satan was saying, no, you don't have to do the cross. If you just come with me, I'll give you it all. It was a bona fide temptation. I know it was because or Jesus wouldn't have been talking about past the cup. What he was, he was tempting them to go without the cross. And that's what he wants to do with all of us. He don't want you to strive. Satan don't want you to strive. Because when you learn to strive, in other words, mission yourself, striving with one another to find the perfection of Christ in you when, you. when you mission yourself to do that, he does not want that because he knows growth and maturity will happen. What he wants for you is he don't want you, enemy don't want no strive, no striving. I'm not talking about striving like quarreling. I'm talking about striving to work something. You strive to be better. You understand? 
Satan don't want you to work like that because that would be a crossless life. Don't you remember Jesus said, carry your cross and follow. Some want to follow without their cross. And it don't work like that. I mean, here you got everybody, and then you're looking at the one with no cross, like, dude, where's your cross? I mean, don't you, haven't you ever been in a work field and everybody's working and everybody's working, but the moment the boss gets up, then the workers get up, you know? You know? All right, boss is working again. We all go to work, you know? And, but then you got all of us working, and then you got that one that gets up by himself, and everybody's looking like, all right, you know, give him a minute or two. You know, he's gone. You know, he's gone. All right, it's been five minutes. He's still standing there. And then the boss knows, oh, Lord, I'm going to have to, hey, what's wrong? What, you know? In the heart of a man, when you're working, and then you look at one that ain't working in his heart, don't you know he's going to question after a while, hey, you, you're going to work with us? You're going to carry your cross? You're going to strive with us? I mean, we're the church after all, amen? We're all in agreement? I mean, I, that would just be terrible if the pinky toe said, I ain't striving today. <laughs> what do you mean? I'm not working with you today. Oh, Lord, don't you know the pinky toe is what gives balance? I mean, just one little member, if he stops doing what he's supposed to be doing, the whole body senses it. Amen? So it's important that we all put in. It's important that we have no lazy ones in, in, the, uh, in the kingdom of God. Do you understand that? We don't want any lazy workers. We don't want any lazy workers. Matter of fact, Paul said, if any of you are lazy, you don't want to contend with your flesh, don't want to strive with it, it says, cast him out from among you. Did you know that? Yeah. I mean, there was, a, there was a time of grace where it's like, all right, we're going we're gonna to work with you. We're going to work with you. We're going to work with you. But then there comes a time where it's like, okay, okay, you should have been already by now. Okay, now you're doing it on purpose. Just if you ain't in with us, then you ain't in with us. When you're ready, come back. We'll love on you. There got to be a time like that. There has to be that. That's why I believe that it's necessary that the elders of the church are in the church because it's elders that are going to say, hey, mijito, come on. What you doing? That's why the enemy don't want elders in the church. Because with elders comes discipline, experience. Huh? With elders comes discipline, experience, correction. Elders know how to correct. They'll tell you and you'll be like, yeah, 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 but, 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 you know, no, 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 no. You're never above your teacher. Jesus said that. So striving is important and necessary when you're in with Jesus Christ. You ready? First Corinthians uh, one twenty-seven. Is everybody in, in the spirit of what I'm understanding? What are we doing? Good. Amen. One twenty-seven. Look what it says here. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. Only let your conversation be the gospel. That whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs. That ye stand fast in one spirit with one mind, look what it says here, striving together. If you got a Bible, write that in there. Striving together. The church is about working together. Striving. Striving like on a mission. Striving like we got to dig this ditch so that water can run through it and we can get water over there to that city over there. And anybody who ain't working, get out of here because you ain't part of it. I want all the good workers because we got to get this mission accomplished. When we are in the mission of the gospel and we are bringing forth ways into people's lives, love and mercy into people's lives, you don't want any lazy people. You want only the ones that will strive with you. I mean, even the natural understands that. I can go right now to an elementary school and all of a sudden say, you and you, you're going to be one team, you're going to be the other. Choose your people. Guess what those both are going to be fighting for? The ones that know how to strive. Is that not true? Even a five-year-old can understand, ooh, I want Dylan. Oh, man, he got Dylan, man. All right, who's next best? Do you understand? And that's what you look for. You look for the next best and you look for the ones that are ready to put in. The ones that are ready to have decision. The last one. And then, and then whoever gets the last one, right? Oh, man, this one ain't really, you know. He's got hard, but he ain't been practicing. He ain't been hard. We'll take you, you know. But then you tell them, all right, you just sit back here in the back, okay? And, and we're all going to be up here. You just be right there. and Just stand there. Don't move. You understand? I mean, what good is someone that doesn't know how to strive with the others? 
It makes sense, doesn't it? But he says, look, you need to be with steadfast in one spirit, one mind. Learn to strive together. Watch this. Striving together for the faith of the gospel. For the faith of the gospel. So that means we should all be striving together for the faith that comes from the gospel. The faith, if you can learn to have faith in the gospel, then you can learn how to use faith that comes from the gospel. I'm going to say it again. If you learn how to use faith to enter in and accept the gospel, you know it took faith for you to accept Jesus, right? Then what you do is you learn to take that saving faith and you learn to draw from it now to use in all your experiences and in your striving together. I didn't just have faith to believe. Now I got to take that faith and learn how to use it to work and to strive with my brothers and sisters with me. Amen? Putting my part in. My part, I'm coming here. I come, I study, I got to do what I can. Keep things, keep my mind on Christ so I have fresh and new things to say here. I'm striving, amen? But I've seen many churches where the only one striving is the leadership. And ain't nobody else striving. It says the church as one, we should be somehow working together. I mean, I don't care. Look, all I know how to do is clean. Come on, we need cleaners. I mean, there's all of us leadership trying to clean, to keep things clean. The last thing you want in a group of workers is someone that just comes to drink the water and every now and then hit the shovel, but then they go back to the water. <laughs> and then they hit a shovel again, and then they're going back to the... You ever, have anybody ever know what I'm talking about? You ever had that before? You got the one, hey, bro, you done got it like five times to go get water. We're still going now. In people's hearts, don't you think they start to question when you just dip in and dip out? Don't you think, I remember... I remember I used to flip houses for a guy from Lebanon. He taught me a lot of things from that area. And it's so cool because as he was sharing me things, I was sticking it to the word of God, you know. And I was like, man, this is amazing because he's from there, you know. But anyways, he was from Lebanon. And I remember I was working and the other guy, man, he kept getting up. And he'd go out and smoke a cigarette for about 20 minutes. And then he'd come back and work a little bit. Then he'd go back out, smoke a cigarette for 20 minutes. I didn't care. I was still going because I knew I had a job. I knew we had to finish this thing. You know, that just was the nature in me. And I remember that Lebanese guy came in. He goes, what are you doing? He goes, man, I'm just having a smoke. You've already had five smokes in the last hour. He goes, well, I, I deserve my smoke ring. I said, no, you don't. And he said the most amazing thing. I've never heard actually someone say it out. He goes, don't you know in this man's heart he's judging you? I was sitting there, and I was like, <laughs> I mean, he said it out loud. I never, you know, most people don't know how to, they don't know how to verbalize that stuff. They don't know how to communicate those things. Hey, you need to get to work. You need, but he said that, he goes, don't you know that this man here is judging you while you're out there? He's judging you. Now, this guy from Lebanon had a better understanding of what judging meant. A lot of America don't. Don't judge me. No, bro, you're being judged, you know. We're all judging you, you know? Everybody, you've been judged. We're judging your life. We see where you're at, you understand? But yet we have this thing in this church. Well, don't judge me. And I'm telling you right now, within the church, we are to judge each other. We are to do that. Now, you know what the Bible says, though? It says we don't judge outside of the church. So you can't judge unbelievers. They're lost. They already stand judged. But within the church, oh, yes. We correct, we rebuke. Sometimes we even speak hard to each other. I remember one time I worked under a pastor, and I'm talking about striving, y'all. Striving for holiness, striving for the person of Jesus. I remember one time I, I was in, in the same church. I remember I w was working for a pastor, and uh, man, I did something really bad, really wrong. And he made me come up to the church and confess the whole thing. Man, I was about this big, you know, but man, it taught me I ain't never doing that again. You know what I mean? And anyways, you don't see stuff like that in the church anymore, which it should. It should return because it does. It brings responsibility and it brings commitment, you know. But most of us, you know, we want to be politically correct. But anyways, after, I remember after a time, uh, he, uh, he, after a time of my discipline, I had a two-year discipline in church. Now, many of you don't even know what that means, you know. 
And, for, and I believe that's why I'm at where I'm at, because I learned to strive. I got through things. Most people, discipline, what the heck, what do you mean discipline? You know discipline in the church. Church is love and mercy, and, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, no, 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 they're discipline, you know. And so I remember I did a two-year discipline. I completed it too, faithful, man, faithful, I completed it. And I remember when I came back, I went in there, and he goes, hey, this is your last day. This is the last day. And I remember I was a young man. He said, you can go back to playing the drums, and because that's what I wanted to do, worship, you know. He said, you can go back to playing the drums, and you can go back to singing and doing what you want to do. And I said, God bless you. And he goes, you've learned from this? And I said, yeah, I've learned from this. I said, I've really learned how to. Man. And, and I stopped. And it hurt. <laughs> a pastor. A pastor did that. And when I look back at him, he had all the love in his eyes, like a father. I knew and I understood this. I understood it. If I wouldn't have understood it, I don't believe the Lord would have allowed it in my life. Because many people don't understand this type of thing. But I got it. I, good. I understood it. And I was right in the middle. I said, yeah, I've learned so much. Man, man I felt like my cheek was over here. In the and I got myself back together. And immediately a scripture came to mind. A strike from a righteous man is like oil over my head. Yeah. I'm telling you. Man, no wonder why I, I, I am where I am. Because I strive with God. I worked with him. When I didn't understand it, I put my time into it. He says, with one spirit, one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel, for the faith of the gospel. In other words, all the faith that can come from it when you came into the family, strive for faith in your lives. When it's not going right, strive for faith. Lord, we're almost there and I don't see an answer, but I stand, I strive, I strive, I strive for faith. Watch this, verse 28. And here's the response of this kind of living. And in nothing, in nothing terrified by your adversaries. When you strive with God, don't be terrified of nothing when it comes to attacks from the enemy. Don't be terrified. Terrified means when you're not thinking anymore. Terrified means when you're not thinking, it's over. You're in fear. You let some gunshots go off in a mall. You'll see terrified. People will run over children. They'll step on each other, smash you. They don't care. I mean, the worst thing you can do is be in the middle of some running cattle. Them cattle just run. They're blind. I don't know about my, my dad. He taught me how to ride horses from a very young age. The worst thing you can be is on a horse that is running terrified. I mean, they have their eyes open, but they don't see nothing. I mean, they'll run into a brick wall, bam, with you in it. Brick wall right in front of them. They don't see nothing. They don't see a fence. They don't see nothing. You can turn their head, and they're looking at you, and they're still, they, they, they're still running. That's terrified. That's what happens when you don't know how to strive with the Lord. You end up running, and you're, Jesus, I think you're with me, you know, and, and, and you're, not, you're not sane. You're not thinking where you're going. And what happens? You run into brick walls. You run through fences that you shouldn't have been running past out of. You find yourself in areas where you shouldn't have been. You're outside of the territory that God gave you. You're over here in this little area. You're outside of your sheep pen with the sheep fold. All the sheep are over there with the shepherd wondering, where did he go? And you're out here looking back, where did I go? You understand? Oh, man, I'm talking to somebody here. Golly. And then what do you got to do? Then you got to recognize, my gosh, and, 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 and you know what the word says? You got to come to yourself. See, that horse, when he's off running, all of a sudden, and he'll slow down. All of a sudden, you see his sight come back, you know, and then he kind of, whoo, what happened? Do you know what I mean? I don't know what happened from here to there. Man, they're miles away. I mean, horses. And then what do you got to do? Well, let's go get them, you know. <laughs> then you got to come to yourself. Get, let that terrified come off of you. You understand? And then, oh, man, man, let me get, man. And what did that, what did that uh, prodigal son do? He came back. That mole ran off without thinking. He didn't strive for his inheritance. 
He didn't work for his inheritance. He wanted it just given to him. When you have things just given to you and you don't strive for them, you don't work for them, you will not appreciate them. I know because every $40 toy that I buy my sons is over there in whatever, in a room darkened. But man, whatever happened to that toy, you know what I mean? They didn't strive for it. But let it be the toys that they do strive for. Oh, they keep it in little boxes or whatever and they're carrying it around with them <laughs> because they, 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 you made them work for it. Same way with the Lord. You got to strive together. And then you won't be terrified. Then you have the ability and in nothing terrified by adversaries, which is to them an evident token of perdition. In other words, the fact that I ain't scared and terrified of Satan alone is perdition to him. It's alone, just that being alone, him going da da da, and I'm standing there looking at you, devil, and looking at him, not terrified, unmoved, that alone speaks volumes to him. And he runs. You understand? What is it? Because I learned to strive. I learned to stand. Stand. And all the hell comes. And all the stuff comes. And you're just like, my gosh, I want to give in. But no, stand. Put your poker face on. Stand. Stand. Strive with the Lord for your faith. Terrif being terrified will go. And it will speak to the enemy as a, a token of perdition. Let me, see what, let me show you what that means. Go to Amplified. Same thing. Verse 127 and 28. I'm almost done. We're going to have to keep going on this one, man. We're going to do this one a couple Sundays, man. Watch this, Amplified. Only be sure as citizens so to conduct yourselves that your manner of life will be worthy of the good news. Strive to do that, right? The gospel of Christ, so that whether I do come and see you or am absent, I may hear this of you that you are standing firm in united spirit in purpose, striving side by side. Standing firm, united, one purpose, one spirit. Sound like an army. Striving side by side and contending with a single mind. For the what? Faith. Say it again. For the what? Faith. For the faith of the glad tidings, the gospel. I mean, standing side by side. I'm thinking immediately Adam and Eve and, hey, it's not good for you to be alone. I'm going to find you one that's just right for you and I'm going to pull him from your side. And she came from his side. Amen. And he said, this person from your side will be a suitable helper for you. A helper, a helper. And then later on, whenever the Holy Spirit came, the Lord said, hey, I'm going to pull someone out. He's going to be in you. And you can pull him out side by side. He will work with your frame. Whatever height you are, he'll be the height you are so he can meet you eye to eye from your side, side by side. And he will be your helper. He will counsel you. He will guide you. Do you understand? I mean, he will fit your form. He will fit your frame. The reason why I say that is because he lives in you, doesn't he? Yeah. He lives in you, so he fits your frame. Amen? How big is the Holy Ghost? Man, as big as I let him go, he fits my frame. Whatever, the, the, whatever as big as that I want to go out, however big I want to get out, that's how big as he wants to go. Whatever how much I want to magnify him, that's what he's going to magnify out to be. Amen? In Jesus' name. Golly, hallelujah. But look what he says. Let me hear this. You see, uh, da, da, da. Be worthy of good news. Striving, standing firm in united spirit, purpose, striving side by side. Do you understand that he's talking about each other? Amen, amen. Man, I'm glad y'all are here because you know what? I ain't alone when it comes to fighting for the faith. Amen. I don't know about you, but I've been attacked all week. Like you got quiet, like, yeah, you too, you know? I've been attacked all week. Arrows. I mean, people saying stuff about me, saying I don't deserve, saying I'm not supposed to be, 
saying that, what are you doing here? Looking at you like, what are you doing here? God put me here. Ah, you know what I mean? How'd you get this job? God gave it to me. Ah, you know what I mean? You ain't never had a job this big. Yeah, I know, but God gave it to me. Amen? Man, we should all be striving and contending for that kind of faith. Amen? Uh, encouraging each other. We should all be able to start getting to know each other. How you been, man? This and this. How this been going? This ain't too good, man. You know what? Me neither. Let's work together. Let's strive for the faith. Let's make sure we not lose our faith. Amen? Amen. Doing that is a token to the enemy that one day you're going to die in the lake of fire. Because I work my faith. I strive my faith. I strive for the faith that produces from the gospel. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Look at the message. Golly. Woo! Man. Anybody getting anything out of this? <laughs> Golly. Look what it says. Meanwhile, live in such a way that you are a credit to the message of Christ. So you have credit. You're worth something, you know? Oh, man. Live in such a way that you're a credit to the message of Christ. Let nothing in your conduct hang on whether I come or not. Your conduct must be the same whether I show up to see things for myself or hear it from a distance. Stand united, singular in vision, contending for people's trust in the message, the good news. Go on to 28. Man, it was well, good stuff right here. Not flinching. Woo! I'm going to tell you what, the coolest thing I remember seeing uh, in high school was some big old dude on a little dude and saying, no, this and that, and everybody like, dang, this dude's about to beat him up. And that, little, that big dude goes, and that little dude just stays nothing. You ever seen that before? I mean, it surprises the heck out of everybody. I mean, you look at, oh, he's dead, he's gone, and all of a sudden, you know, and that guy stops, and that little dude's just there standing like that, not flinching. That's the kind of striving. Amen. You flinch, you're scared. We all know that. But if you don't flinch, man, he just got, I got something here. Watch out for the little dudes. <laughs> then we'll start saying, watch out for the little dudes, man. You never know. They look skinny, but you never know, man. They might come out. Amen? Amen. Let you be that person for the enemy. Don't flinch at his stuff. Don't flinch at his lies. Just because it don't look like you're getting provided, just because it don't, don't flinch at that. Strive for the faith. Stand there. Poker face. Looking forward. You understand? I mean, man, you got to look forward like, if, nah, I don't care what you look at. And he'll come and throw those big things at you and you're non-flinching. And you're not even dodging in the slightest before the opposition. You ain't doing this. You ain't doing this because you know whatever he's going to bring, no weapon formed against me will prosper. I don't have to do that. When it comes to the kingdom of God, all I got to do is stand. The enemy go like that, and I just stand there, yeah. And then I begin to resist, and he flees. No flinching, no dodging in the slightest before the opposition. Your courage, watch this. Oh, man, this is where I wanted to go. Your courage and your unity, right? All of us, your unity. We all don't flinch, all right? If anything, let's become a church that don't flinch. Don't flinch ministries. <laughs> Our mission, we don't flinch. <laughs> Man, somebody, you need to write that down, baby. Maybe, maybe that, uh, don't flinch ministries. Our mission statement, we don't flinch, you know. Oh, that's good stuff, y'all. Look what it says. Your courage and your unity will show them that what they're up against. Defeat for them, victory for you, and both because of God. See, our unity and our striving together 
working for the faith, not flinching, not dodging those things, that itself is a sign of their defeat. You understand? I mean, an army that don't flinch is like, oh, Lord, they don't even look scared. They must have a super weapon somewhere in there, you know? Yes, we do. We have the Holy Ghost with us, which is God. God causes us to be in victor, and God causes them to be in defeat, all while we stand and strive for that faith. Amen? Let me show you how important it is to strive. Luke 13, 24. This is Jesus' words. This is Jesus' words. <laughs> God bless you, wife. It's coming out of my spirit there. God bless you. Look what Jesus says. You see that word? I'm going to let you let some of y'all still. Y'all need to catch. Get in there. Get in that Bible. Luke 13, 24. I'm sure there's other ways that say this. This is the King James. I love it because that was the first word it used. I, you know, I want to share with you something. I never saw this word until today. I've read this scripture 100 times over. And this word right there in the beginning, it just gave me, that's why I'm getting revelation on it. Because I was like, wow, I mean, the Lord was already kind of putting that. And then when I read that, I go, ooh, that's it. That's the message. i never seen that today. i never seen it until today. Look what it says. Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able to you. You remember the wide gate and the shallow gate? You know, what is it? The, the wide and huh? the narrow. Thank you. That's what he's talking about. Many of you have never read, maybe you've never read that in the King James. He calls it the shallow gate, but what it is is the narrow gate or the straight gate. The straight gate is the narrow gate that you're used to reading, maybe at the NIV or some other, you know. Wide is the gate. Many pass there through. Narrow is the gate, and few but pass through there, right? I never noticed that it says, but strive to enter into the narrow gate. Man, I'm going to tell you, I think of, I, I, I'm almost thinking of it like this way. That narrow gate probably don't even look like a door. It probably just about maybe six, seven inches where you, <laughs> you ever done that before? You ever tried to squeeze in through it? It's an opening. It's an opening, you know. It's an opening, but belly's in the way. You know, things are in the way. Ah, you know. Yeah, then you come out the other side, buttons missing, scrapes on the thing. I, I almost think of it this way. Because it says not many go through. <laughs> it says. <laughs> man, I hope y'all are hearing me, man. It says not many go through it. I believe not many go through it because they see it. Nope. And they ain't willing to do what it takes to get through it. They watched us get through it, scrapes and all. Why? We strived through the door. You think we just walked through this door like, like did narrow, you know? No. This is a narrow place. If it was just right, everybody would still be going through it. It must be a size that people look at and say, man, I ain't been through that. I'm going to walk around. You ever seen those kind of entries? Now we're going to go this way. It's short. I can't fit through that. I'm going to go find me another. It's got to look like that. <laughs> it's got to look like that. This thing, he's saying, this narrow gate, this straight gate, man, you're going to have to strive to fit through that thing. It's not going to be easy. It's going to take work. You might have to lose some things to get through it. There might be things that you're carrying with you that once you get through it, come, oh, Lord, that it can't go with me. And you got to let it go. So that you can pass through. There are some things that are not meant for you to go through the straight gate. Some things have to be shed down, lost off. 
Some things have to let go. Let the weight come off so that you can, all right, here we go. You know, and get through the thing. That's the straight gate. That's the narrow gate. I mean, I got revelation on this now. You have to strive to enter into that thing. You got to work it. You got to create a strategy for it. You got to be mission purpose to strive yourself to to find the faith of the gospel. You got to strategize your life. There ain't no way you're going to get through that until you, okay, all right, what do I got to do? Well, let me take my belt off. Let me take this off. Can't take this with me. Shed all this off. You understand? It takes things. When you work in the faith of the gospel, it takes thinking. Do I really need to take this junk in with me over there? Is it really going to benefit me? Is all this baggage of pictures of the past, are they really going to benefit me going through this narrow gate? They're not going to fit. And many of us are trying to go through the narrow gate. Oh, my gosh, didn't make it and coming back out. Well, how are we going to get in? I can't fit. You know, I'm skinny enough, but I can't fit in. And we're all looking at you on the other side. Let it go. Let it go. Let the old stuff go, but I can't fit. Let it go. You're fitting in just fine. You just got to let those things. Strive for the faith. Let that stuff go in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Anybody with me? Hallelujah. Woo. Amplified. In Jesus' name. Amplified is just another version. Do I got Amplified or did I do message? What I got in there? Message? Let's see what it says. Whether few or many is none of your business. <laughs> put, your mind, <laughs> put your mind on your life with God. The way to life to God is vigorous. Do you see that? Vigor. <laughs> I remember in the movie, vigorous, you know. Very vigorous, very vigorous. The life of Christ, very vigorous. Well, someone look up that. If you, someone got the, the, I'd like to look up that word if you can. If anybody got a little phone here with the thing, look up the word vigorous for me. Have you mind doing that? Somebody, anybody. Whether few or many is none of your business. Put your mind on your life. Whether there's a bunch of you or whether there's a few of you. Remember I was talking about in the church, man, it don't really matter about the, 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 the quantity. I was talking about the quality. Remember that? And I don't, I don't care if there's just a few of us. This is just enough right here. We can do damage in Fort Worth just with this right here. Man, if we, if we strive and really get our place up, man, I, I, this is all we need right here. I don't need no more. But we'll get out there. We'll start blessing people. But whether there be few or none of you, that ain't none of our business. But put your mind on your life with God. The way to life to God, the way to life or the way to God is vigorous and requires your total attention. Say it out loud. What does vigorous mean? Woo! God bless you all. Forceful, energetic. Physical, mental strength. The gospel, the way to Christ is very vigorous. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, I didn't just land up on this pulpit. Mm mm. You think the Lord just land me up on this pulpit? Now, I'm going to tell you something. There are men and women that just find themselves landing on a pulpit, maybe because they got a degree, but didn't go through no vigorous, didn't do anything, didn't do any striving to work for it. You can tell those ministers, and you can tell the ones that went through hell and high water just to get into a place where you're actually serving the Lord. You understand? <laughs> You can ask my parents, this didn't come easy. Oh, no, I had to find myself up and down. Just when I thought I was up, boom, I'm down. But I strived for it. I kept myself in church. I may have lost myself for a little bit, but I found my way back. Thank God for his mercy. And I strived and I stayed in it. And I lost people along the way. And I lost relationships along the way. And I found new friends that were only for a season. But then lost them also. Never to return. I've never seen them again. But it was just for a moment there. Why? To contend for a life where I solely trust on the Lord God alone. You understand? 
man, that's the way it is. There are people that helped me get here that I've never seen again. I may never see them again. That's because it doesn't matter. It's none of my business whether there's a few or whether there's many. I'm not in the business of counting. Why ain't he in my life no more? No, I'm in the business of striving and taking the vigorous requirements so that I can have my total attention and focused on God. And from there, from there, it says a lot of you are doing, watch this, a lot of you are going to assume that you'll sit down to God's salvation banquet. Yeah. Oh, Lord, you're bringing the church back, Lord. He's bringing back the church. A lot of you are going to assume, oh, there's so many Christians assuming that we're just going to sit down to God's salvation banquet just because you've been hanging around the neighborhood all your lives. Man, are you seeing this? I mean, e -e -e. this is the word of God. A a a a man, could, can you think of some Christians now? Yeah, judge. Judge. Some of them may be your families. Judge them correctly. If this is where they're at, show them. That ain't true salvation. Bro, you're not sitting at the table. You're just hanging around the neighborhood. You've been in church, been out in the church. You're just hanging around us. And you think uh, maybe I'll be, I'm a Christian because I've been around y'all. I've been in another. It doesn't mean just because you've been lollygagging around or maybe dipping in and out. It doesn't mean. Man, check with the Father. Make sure your heart is right. Make sure you're in. Now, I'm not saying just because you miss church, all of a sudden you're not out. No, no. Check your heart. Recognize. Check in your I'm not saying some of you got to miss. I'm not saying that. Man, we, we got to miss. Sometimes we got things to do. I understand that. But I'm talking about if you can look at your life holistically, can you tell yourself, am I vigorously working and striving for the faith? Or am I thinking that I'm just going to sit myself down at a banquet one day without having carried no kind of cross and carried, carried no kind of vigor in me? Man, and there it is. There it is. There's the two right there. There's the two right there. And that's where we stand. Strive for that narrow gate. Strive means to devote serious effort or energy or an endeavor. That's what striving means. To devote serious effort and energy. The Lord says, you want true salvation? You want to see the real work of God in you? Devote serious effort and energy for the gospel. Devote serious effort and energy when it comes to the things of God. Devote less energy when it comes to the things of the world. Devote not so serious and less energy to the things of the world. Let your seriousness come out when it comes to God. That's striving for the faith of the gospel. Amen? Ali. We have this in Amplified. I would like this in Amplified, and then we can end right there. Man, I'll tell you what. It's powerful. Thank y'all for listening. Golly. This is Jesus' words, red letter. Strive to enter by the narrow door. Force. Oh, yeah. They, yeah. yeah, see that? I love when I say stuff and then you go look in the words like, hey, look, there it is, you know. It lets me know that I'm speaking by the Spirit, you know. It lets me know. Man, this, this, is, this is revelation right here. If, if anything, what I'm telling you is the truth. That narrow gate, you need to think of it like that little bitty thing, like I'm telling you. You can't just slip through it. You're going to scrape some stuff and some things are going to have to get lost to go through the narrow space. It's going to be that chained up gate, and no, the only way you can get into it is that other side over there. It's like, ah, oh, it's chained up. The only way is through here. I can't fit through that. You know what? I'm going to make myself fit. I'm going to remove what I have to remove, let go of what I have to go, and I'm going to strive to enter by that little narrow door over there. 
I don't care if I have to force myself through it, it says. I'm telling you what. I can imagine someone just, you're like, oh, oh, God, ding, bing, oh, man, he done lost his shorts. Bang, God, shirt gone. He's in it, God, yeah, you know, man, I'm telling you right now, that deserves right there, man. You deserved that one, bro. Come on in, come on in. Get him a new coat, fix him up. You understand? That's a person that strived to be inside. You understand? That's a person, maybe scrapes along the way, maybe even shed blood. Some, in the word it says, were martyrs, and they lost their life trying to squeeze through that thing. But they were considered in, and they're called martyrs. Man, I'm speaking by the Spirit. There are some that lost their lives squeezing through that narrow Pulled him out. They said, man, that was enough. He's in. I mean, I don't care if it takes everything you got. Grab you, grab your children, get them through there. Strive for the gospel. Strive to have faith. Strive to work that out in your lives. Amen? In Jesus' name, amen. Let's all stand up here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give a hand for the Lord. Amen. Let's just let make a little bit of noise. Man, oh, I'll tell you what, that was a good word for me. I took that word myself, man. Preaching to myself over here. We got to keep going. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, I pray that you put that spirit, Father, over every one of us today. I pray that we take a more serious approach to our Christianity. I pray that we put a little more effort and energy into our Christianity. I pray that our decisions to go ye therefore become a little more serious and a little more active, Father. I pray that a little bit vigor will come on of us, Father. I pray that we be a vigorous people, Father. I pray that we be a hearty people, Lord. I pray that we be a kind of people that know how to get through desert times and still come out alive on the other side, Lord. I pray that we're the kind of people, Father, that when we fall, we get back up every time, Lord. I pray, Father, that the fight will come on us, Lord, the vigor, the seriousness, the energy, Father, almost like a boxer that's preparing himself for a battle, Lord. I pray that we do that same type of preparation, Lord, and we take that same kind of serious, Father, knowing that this could take our life. This could mean the cost of my entire life, but I give it up for you. This could cost me loved ones. This could cost me losing my family. This could cost me losing people that are precious to me, but the only way to get through that narrow gate, I have to let it go. That narrow gate ain't no, that ain't no funny thing. I'm getting revelation on that right now. That little narrow gate, boy, will cost you your life if you don't get through it. It'll cost you your family if you don't work it out and get through that little space better push through you better force yourself through you better suck the air all of it you ain't try to get that as much as you can drag your children through it you better get through that narrow gate it's gonna cost you something stuff will fall off of you you're gonna lose some things some things can't pass through but let it go because it's better to be on the other side than it is to be sitting back there I pray that that energy come on you in the name of Jesus. And I pray that you take that seriousness on you. (laughs) Oh, I pray that seriousness come on you, people. I pray that you not lollygag during these times, but that you take everything you can and you bring it through that narrow gate. That you force yourself. Strive for that narrow gate. 
Strive to push through it. Strive to stand. The fact that you stand and are pushing through it is already in at enmity with the enemy. He's watching you do this and he's looking at you and while doing it, it's almost like a curse to him watching you stand. You standing in your position with a vigor and an intensity on you is already a judgment on the devil. You standing there with an intensity and a force on you concerning the gospel is already a judgment and a curse to Satan and his cohorts. The fact that you have vigor in you pushing and pressing forward is already making judgment on hell and what their end result will be. Push through. Push through. Push through that thing. Oh, almost like a mother giving birth. You know, it says that in Corinthians, almost like a mother giving birth, man, you fight, produce that faith. Some mothers even lost their lives for new life. Some mothers even gave up so that the next generation could live. If that so be me, Lord, then I'd take that, Father. If it costs me my everything, if it costs me to look judged by the world, if it costs me to look like the world is against me, if it costs me, Father, to look like I've lost everything even, Lord, if it costs me for everyone to look and say, God, I thought the Lord was with him. Lord, if it costs me that, Father, then let me gain my reward in heaven. That kind of vigor. That kind of vigor. That if I lose something, it intensifies even more. When I'm judged, it intensifies the word even more in me. If I were to lose everything, Oh, I can hear people say, be careful what you say. No, you be careful what you say. If I were to lose everything, I would intensify by 200%. Give all. I remember my, me and my wife were saying this the other day. I said, you know what? If I was to lose everything, babe, well, you better watch out because I would give everything. Every 24-7 of my life would be everything. I'm, I'm now where the Lord is, has me now, and I'm going to do what the Lord has me to do. But if I were to lose everything, or 200% it would intensify my life only the Lord knows my life only the Lord knows our end result only the Lord knows where you're supposed to be let no man take your steps let no man say they know your steps only God knows your steps do whatever it takes to enter into the narrow gate oh do whatever it takes strive to get into the narrow gate Anybody want to make a decision today? Enter the narrow gate. Just raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five. You ain't never made the decision. Jesus be your Lord and Savior. I'm going to ask that you raise your hand. Anybody want to make a decision today? Anybody want to make a decision today? Make Jesus your Lord and Savior. That's what we're talking about here. that was you today I just want you to raise up your hand to the Lord and say Father I believe in your son I believe what he did on the cross I believe I can do nothing to earn and to gain your grace over me but I believe in Jesus Christ and today, I make him my Lord. That means he can tell me what to do. That means he can tell me what to do. Say, Jesus, I make you my Lord. I make you my Savior. Receive me into eternal dwellings. And Father, until then, Help me. Put vigor in my life. Put an intensity in my life. Put a seriousness in my life.
to strive for the faith of the gospel. In Jesus' name. And we all say, Last week I had to uh, do something men's meeting. Today at 5 I'll be here. Go ahead and read them chapters. Chapters we're supposed to do. If we, you weren't able to last week, uh, we're going to do it this week. 5 o'clock. All the men will be here. We usually take about an hour and a half. It's powerful. For the guys that haven't done it, y'all need to just come. Just come. We're reading a book and we're going through it. It's very powerful. 5 o'clock, all right? All men, 5 o'clock. You are dismissed. God bless you. God bless you. My gosh. Wow, man.